Inflation figure rises again from 12.13% to 12.20%, the highest in 22 months. Stakeholders in the capital markets urge federal government to incentivize commodity trading. Senate appeals to the federal government to ban travelers coming in from high-risk countries to control the spread of coronavirus. Niger and Benin owe Nigeria 29 billion naira, says Nigeria Electricity Regulatory Commission. Well, thanks for joining us on today's business where we bring you information around the business world and also get analysts to give insight on current economic trends. My name is Mr. Frank and today promises to be informative. But we'll start with the stories making the headlines. Now we begin with um, the inflation report that was released yesterday by the National Bureau of Statistics where it said with inflation peaking at 12.20% in February compared to 12.13% in the previous month, analysts have urged the federal government to facilitate cheaper domestic credit to the economy. They taxed the federal government to tackle the root cause of rising inflation as inflationary pressures continue to distort ma macroeconomic indices amidst break bleak prospects in the global economy caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. The Consumer Price Index, which is the CPI, that measures inflation increased to 12.20% year-on-year in February compared to 12.13% in the preceding month, according to data released yesterday by the National Bureau of Statistics. Food inflation increased to 14.90% compared to 14.85% in January, witnessing increases in the prices of bread cereals, fish, meat, vegetables, oils, and fat. The price of crude oil has continued to go up uh, in the past few weeks, leaving analysts predicting that another economic recession is imminent. The tumbling research prices, which could fall below $20 per barrel, is bad business for an economy that has continued to build its fortune around oil. Our correspondent, Chairman Joseph, brings us more. Crude oil price has, in the past few weeks, dropped sharply from above $60 per barrel. The situation is critical, as at the time of filing this report, Brent crude, against which the Nigerian oil is priced, has fallen below $30 per barrel. Now, various factors have been blamed for this major crash. Demand has dropped because of the spread of coronavirus across the world, which is believed to have in turn sparked a series of price cuts. Secondly, a price cut free-for-all has also broken out globally following the collapse of an OPEC plus alliance over a week ago. The chunk of Nigeria's expected revenue in the 2020 budget was hinged on oil production of 2.18 million barrels per day with an oil price benchmark of $57 per barrel. Unfortunately, this appears no longer feasible as even Nigeria currently struggles to find buyers for its crude oil. But what does all these really mean for Nigeria? So we are going to lose about uh, between 50 and 60 percent of the projected revenue. Um, and the unfortunate thing about it is that that aspect of the revenue also facilitate the realization of non-oil revenue. But the implication is that uh, we may not even be able to service our debts in the long run because currently we are using about 53% of all our revenue earnings to service debts. This is just the third month in the year and economic watchers are already seeing gloomy days ahead. They think government has relaxed too much in the corridors of oil and must begin to take necessary action in ensuring diversification of the nation's economy. We fail to learn from previous uh, downturns in the price of crude oil. For instance, the one of 2007, 2008, it's up to early 2009. We should have learned from it 
it's going to be a very huge challenge for the country unless we are able to take reasonable steps to make sure we ameliorate the loss in terms of plugging the leaks, those leaking points, recovering monies that are due to the Treasury, and of course, cutting down the overbloated uh, governance structure. Government must surely sit up in the coming months as already the 2.64 trillion naira expected revenue from oil is unachievable, at least for now. From Abuja, the federal government has been urged to incentivize the trading of commodities through provision of high quality seedlings to farmers, among others, saying it will impact positively on the Nigerian economy. This was part of a recommendation at the end of a two day international conference on the Nigerian commodities market with the theme Commodities Trading Ecosystem key to diversifying Nigeria's economy, organized by the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC. According to the communique issued at the conclusion of the conference, access to long-term funds through the Nigerian capital market was identified as, a critical, as critical towards the holistic development of the agricultural sector. The participants agreed that Nigeria must decisively address the challenges across the entire gamut of the agricultural value chain in terms of access to finance by farmers, aggregation of smallholder farmers, storage, warehousing and transportation, establishment of efficient irrigation mechanisms to ensure year-round farming, availability of effective de-risking frameworks and introduction of modern scientific solutions, as well as cutting-edge equipment for mechanized farming. At the conference, um, United Political Parties, COP, has sued the federal government and the National Assembly to stop them and their agents from mortgaging the country's economic future by consummating a faulty loan deal in a separate suit. The Nigerian Opposition Coalition is also suing proposed lenders from advancing a loan of $22.7 billion to the Bihari administration, addressing the press conference on Monday. The COP insisted that the financial institution were putting the funds of the depositors in danger by funding a shopping extravaganza of government. Take a listen. The manner in which the Senate approved the loan being sourced from various international lenders is viewed by the opposition as a poorly executed plan to sell Nigeria into economic slavery and financial colonialism. The opposition is worried that under the loan agreement, consultants are expected to take an alleged whopping 40% of the loan, while projects are to purportedly take the remaining 60%. It therefore is warning that Nigeria is about to take on a loan burden from which it was redeemed by the Obasanjo administration. The exchange rate of the dollar due to certain vagaries, including gross mismanagement of our economy, is now chasing 400 naira to a dollar. This means that at this rate, the 22.7 billion loan will be equivalent of 9 trillion and 8 billion naira only. This is more than the entire 2019 budget and just a little less than the entire 2020 budget. The CUPP insists that Nigeria does not need the loan but is lacking in governance capacity. This is why it says government could envisage borrowing $500 million to revitalize the NTA. This is a television station that is not commercially viable but only carries government propaganda, which the government does not even pay for. What then is the business plan for the recovery of this loan or is the government comfortable to tell Nigerians that citizens should pay for their propaganda? Let NTA be made viable by airing other views and they will generate revenue like AIT, TVC, Channel, STV and other TV stations. So, the CUPP is taking government to court. In view of the lopsidedness of the project, the frivolous nature of some of the projects, the lack of evidence of the economic viability of the projects, inflated costs of the projects, lack of competence and transparency to monitor the loan disbursement, over bloated costs to consultants, the Nigerian Opposition Coalition CUPP, in pursuit of public interests of Nigerians, including the unborn generation, who are the ones largely to pay for the avarice of this government, today launch multiple legal, legal offensives with public interest suit filed at the Federal High Court, seeking to stop the move. While the legal process to halt federal government's borrowing plan may not have much effect, it serves to draw attention of Nigerians to the incongruity of the borrowing process. It of course leaves open the option for the House of Representatives to close the door to the loan. 
and this is one of the requests the opposition coalition is making. All right, from money issues, we move to the impact coronavirus pandemic is still having in the nation. Now, Nigerians fear that the current measures taken by the government to control the spread of COVID-19 in the country are not enough, indicating that the government is not taking it as serious as it should. This was seen as a response to a tweet from Aki Abayomi, the Lagos State Commissioner for Health, announcing the third confirmed case of the coronavirus. Now, Nigeria has so far recorded three cases, which in, is relatively fewer compared with some African countries and to the rest of the world. But this has gained question. This has again questioned the decision of the Nigerian government to allow people from high-risk nations into the country. Across Africa, hundreds of international flights have been cancelled and even visas issued to nationals from different countries have been revoked. But Africa's biggest economy, Nigeria, with one of the most underdeveloped healthcare system and a high rate of poverty, has been unwilling to restrict foreign travels. This is worrisome, some tweets reads. And still um, in connection with um, uh, traveling, the Senate has appealed to the federal government to stop non-Nigerian travelers from countries with high prevalence of coronavirus from coming into the country. The Senate resolution followed a point of order re raised during Tuesday's plenary session by the chairman, Senate Committee on Health, Senator Ibrahim Uluriegbe. He said, in addition to the ban, the country should strengthen all the prevention and control practices to curb the spread of the virus. However, the federal government has said it is not considering a travel ban on some countries in spite of the recent announcement of a third coronavirus case in Lagos. Still in the Senate, um, the House has urged the federal government to donate 2 billion naira to the Abuleado um, Emergency Relief Fund set, set up by the, um, the Lagos State Government. Apart from urging members of the National Assembly to also donate to the fund, the Chamber also directed its Committee on Petroleum Downstream, Gas Resources and Petroleum Upstream to investigate the explosion. The Committee had to determine the remote and immediate cause of the explosion with a view to preventing a reoccurrence and report back to the Senate in two weeks. Now, this were part of the resolutions made after adopting a motion on the need to investigate explosion at Abuliadu, Lagos State, moved by Senator Solomon Olamilikon. The Senate observed a minute silence in honor of those who lost their lives in the incident. All right, we move to electricity uh, between Nigeria and two other African nations, where the republics of Togo, Niger, and Benin owe Nigeria a total of 29.97 billion naira for the electricity supply to them from January to September last year. This is according to the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission. Nigeria's power firm Societe de Nigerian de Electricité failed to pay a total invoice of 3.01 billion naira it received in the first quarter of 2019, 3.69 billion naira in quarter two, and 4.1 billion naira in quarter three. Communicate Electrique, the Benin, a power firm owned by Togo and Benin, did not pay 9.74 billion naira for the power supply to it. Um, quite some French um, names there. Now to housing, the Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, has said the federal government has no plan to sell unoccupied houses in most cities across the country. Fashola also added that the government intends to encourage big house owners to break to small units so that people can rent or buy them and start to make income from such houses. Speaking at the Fellowship Award of the Nigerian Institute of Building in Abuja, he urged builders to deploy knowledge and value in building projects in our cities. He enjoined real estate developers to construct what people can use instead of building expensive houses only to be left unoccupied because the younger generation needs small houses. A ride uh, to the House of Representatives, the Committee on Constituency Outreach on Monday disclosed that only 30% of the budgetary allocation to constituency projects was released in 2019 financial year. 
chairman of the committee, Belu Kauje, who disclosed this wide briefing journalist on the outcome of its recent retreat, called on the executive arm of government to ensure adequate release of constituency project funds for effective execution and implementation. Representative Kauje noted that the committee will utilize its powers and mandates to ensure proper education, accountability, and transparency. This assembly, we inherited a budget of 2019. And the issue of constituency project, from the information that we were able to gather, only 30% has been released on 2019. And, it's, eh, and which I believe, as you are aware, is not good enough, you understand, for the implementation of constituency project. So we are urging the executive on their own side to, to do more more especially in releasing the monies of the constituency project, because those projects, they are the projects that affect the life of the people direct at the grassroots level. All right. Um, we go on a short break, and when we come back, we'll be speaking with Sam Onyemelukwe, uh, an entertainment business executive, who will be talking to us about the impact of the coronavirus on the business of entertainment. We'll be right back.